Well, week two of the Alec Murdoch murder trial is underway. The defense objected several times, and every time the state entered a firearm into evidence this morning, eventually leading to a back and forth between defense attorney Jim Griffin and lead prosecutor Creighton Waters. You are objecting on relevance, 403. There's no evidence linking these, linking these guns to the crime. And we're just cumulative. Did you want to respond to the speaking objection? Uh, yes, sir, I do want to respond to the speaking objection. Uh, it is very important to show the extensiveness of the investigation that was done, particularly as it goes to firearms, and there were multiple guns that were tested, and there will be an analyst list here later to show how those guns were tested and what the results of those. So admitting these guns into evidence to show the extent of what was tested is very relevant, Your Honor. All right, again, that was uh, Defense Attorney Jim Griffin and pr Lead Prosecutor Creighton Waters you just heard from. We now bring in our trial analyst, Kim Varner, Grant Varner, father, son, defense attorneys here in Greenville. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us as always. Kim, let's start with you. What stood out most today as we now get underway in week two? To a certain extent, the evidence kind of dribbled in today. Mm -hmm. What concerns me from a defense point of view uh, and from a prosecution point of view is a lot of this stuff was we're very minute and the jury may lose interest because they were playing videos. As soon as they played, they would stop and say, what was just said? What you run the risk of is the juror sitting there going, I just heard this. And they may not be listening at the important time. The other thing, they were talking about the blood on the ATV. Mm -hmm. uh, defense lawyers call it dummying up. Sure. Everything you ask them from the defense perspective, I don't know. I don't know. Such as, would you use an ATV or UTV for hunting? Well, they don't know jurors know better. That doesn't sit well with jurors. It underestimates the, the intelligence and the power of the jury. Mm -hmm. Bringing all the guns in, everybody knows there's a shooting range there. Mm -hmm. There's hunting territory. It's, it's very questionable what the relevance of bringing all those guns is because they're trying to show it's so extensive, but at the same time, you know what Dick is going to say, mm -hmm. that it wasn't extensive at all. They focused on the wrong things. And Grant, as far as all these guns being brought in, it seems like the prosecution may be building up to something. Is, is that your takeaway? So the, the prosecution indicated that it is going somewhere. It is relevant. The relevance may not be known today. Mm. You know, and we're looking at Monday. We're starting week two of trial. But they certainly made a grand presentation. You know, each firearm, you know, protected from the jury, introduced in evidence. Now let's show it to the jury. Is this firearm... Is it safe to present in the courtroom? Is it unloaded? Oh, absolutely, it's unloaded. It's safe to handle. Back in the box it goes. And each and every time there was an objection from the defense, and they made an objection, relevance, overruled. And then they backed it up by citing Rule 403, uh, which again goes to relevance and does the probative value outweigh the prejudicial value. And Judge Newman denied all the motions. So there was a lot of presentation about the firearms. What is it leading up to? I don't know yet. Okay. What I can tell you is that with all the objections being overruled, if Alex Murdaugh is found guilty, there will certainly be appellate grounds based on all these overruled objections at this point in time. Okay. And the defense is making sure that they note for the rec record and argue into the record every objection they can. Okay. Kim? We saw the defense today bring up that two-shooter theory. Do you think they were successful in kind of driving that home to jurors that there is a possibility that there were two shooters according to the defense? Well, again, they don't have the burden of proof. Right. And if the jury questions the possibility, I think that you're going to hear it said more and more and more. Uh, part of that that backs that up, two different weapons. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone kill two different people with two different weapons? Uh, and yes, I think it was the appropriate time to bring it up so that the jury hears it. It's, you, you planted that seed, but I think you'll hear more of that as the case progresses. Okay, Grant, it seemed like there's this back and forth still ongoing about the preservation of the crime scene, saying that the defense saying it was contaminated, the prosecution really driving home, like, nope, they did everything by the book. Where is that headed? I think it's pretty clear at this point. The prosecution, SLED, and the Colleton County Sheriff's Office are going to continue to say, hey, we did it by the book. We did it right. Mm -hmm. You know, this uh, investigation has been well preserved. The crime scene is well preserved. We did a thorough job. We did a great investigation. Yet the defense at every corner is saying, well, now, wait a minute. You didn't do this. Or wait a minute. You allowed civilian vehicles, you allowed patrol cars, investigators' vehicles to just go all over the tire tracks before you ever preserved it. You put blankets over the bodies, and then you moved the blankets. 
countless times. And then months later, you go back to the crime scene, and in painstaking details we saw today, this is a shell, this is a shell, this is a brass casing. How many times to the point where the prosecution's witness was just saying, again, same, again, same. It's going to raise a lot of questions, particularly when they get to closing argument. You know, how great of a job did you do if you went back later and found all these things that could have or should have been discovered on the night these murders happened? You know, look at the tire tracks. That was discussed last week. Not really so much today, but you're seeing more of the same. Why wasn't this done on day one of the investigation? Why are you coming back later? If you're going to do a, a thorough investigation, arguably you should go in and try to identify Alec Murdoch as a suspect on day one or rule him out as a suspect, not come back after everything's been contaminated, potential loss of evidence. Mm. A lot of things should have been handled differently. Okay. Because you're you're going to hear at the end one of the open, one of the first statements that the county deputy stated was we knew at the beginning we had a conflict so we called sled what you're going to hear is then why didn't you preserve the scene and back away rather than get involved in it okay that's going to come back okay what importance it has remains to be seen okay we're going to keep following very closely you guys will be here by our side the entire time so grant varner kim varner thank you so much for joining us thank you